What's up everyone, I'm Mike with Chaos Aquaculture and we're gonna do a fragging and gluing video here, specifically for Acropora. Um, I get asked a lot on how we glue corals, how we frag corals. People will contact me that, that their coral came off a plug or a fish knocked it off and, and they're afraid or they don't know how to put it back on. So I'm gonna teach you guys how I do that. Um, by all means, there's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, it's, this might not be your favorite way, but it's the way I do it and it works really well for us. So I'm just gonna teach you guys how to do that. And it's uh, quick and easy. So let me go over the stuff that I have laid out here um, that you're gonna wanna have. So you're gonna wanna have a pair of bone cutters if we're doing Acropora. I have two sets. I have one set here with a curved tip and I have a straight tip set. If you can only have one, I say get the ones with the curved tip because you can do a little bit more with these, uh, especially getting into smaller colonies if you wanna cut them. I have frag plugs, a Sharpie, Lugol's iodine solution. This is what I like to dip with. There's other stuff you can use. This is the stuff I've always used for many years and it's never ever failed me. It's a great antiseptic. Um, glue, whatever brand happens to be your favorite, and two-part epoxy. Um, this comes, a billion different companies make it. It comes in coralline color, it comes in, in stone color. Um, we use the coralline, but it really doesn't matter which one you use. I happen to like this one. I have rinse, where I'm gonna put uh, uh, the coral when we get it, just so it sits. I'm gonna have dip, this is where I'm gonna put the iodine, and then I'm gonna have a final rinse, where I just kinda you know, make sure there's no dip left or, or residual glue or anything before it goes back into the aquarium. And I have a little frag rack, a little bit of egg crate and some PVC, because it makes it much easier to line up your plugs and glue your coral when you're ready to do it. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab an acro colony. We're gonna start with this fox flame. It's nice and grown out and ready to be fragged. So we're gonna take this guy over. If you can't take the colony out of your aquarium because it's attached to rock, that's okay. You can frag in the tank, but if you can remove the colony, it's always best to do so. Just makes life easier, all right? So first thing you want to do is you want to plan your cut. I like to look at the whole coral first and see what I'm going to take off. So we're going to pop this one off right here. So this is where those curved cutters come in handy because I can get up underneath here, get a grip on it, and snap it off. So I'm just going to throw that one in there while we wait. This is another good one right here. Two, and we'll do one more for good luck. There's a nice chunker right there too. So the reason I'm flipping it over is so you don't fire the coral across the room. And there we go. Now I'm gonna take the colony that I just cut and I'm gonna put that in the water with them. Now we're gonna take the iodine you can use whatever brand Lugol's you want. Bright oil just happened to be the one that was in stock when we were ordering. And it's 40 drops per gallon. There is a half gallon of water in here, so I'm gonna do 20 drops. 19, 20, and then I always do two for good luck. You don't wanna go overboard with Lugol's. You can do some damage, but as long as you don't go too crazy, it'll be fine. Stir it up, you're gonna get that nice yellowish color, and you're gonna move the coral you just cut right into there. So we're gonna put all the pieces in. You're gonna to wanna to leave these in for about five minutes. You can leave it in a little bit longer, you can leave it in a little bit less, but five minutes is definitely the way to go. Uh, with the mother colony that I have in here, I tend to not leave it in as long. They're, they're much larger, so they tend to be a lot hardier than the frags themselves, um, and I just like to get it back in the aquarium as quickly as possible. So I only leave it in for about 30 seconds or so with the mother colony, and then I'll go ahead and take it out. I'm gonna run it through this rinse to make sure there's no iodine left on it. I'm gonna put mama right back in the aquarium. All right, so these fox flames have been in the iodine now for five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them out and I'm just gonna put them in the rinse water over here. They should be sufficiently disinfected and no reason to leave them in any longer. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna get some plugs ready. So we have three frags and I have three dry plugs here. And the reason they're dry is because we're gonna write on them. 
anybody that owns a lot of acros, <coughs> especially named ones, knows that they can get a little bit hectic. Now, granted, the fox flame is an easy one to tell apart, but some of the other tenuous, uh, especially as frags, are difficult to, to tell who's who. So with a Sharpie, I just like to write on the stem of the plug. Now, I'm not going to try to write the whole name. I just need to give myself an indicator on what this is. So I'm just going to give it an FF on each one of these for Fox Flame. Now, even if there's another acro with FF as the initials, at least we can narrow it down. And then based on the way the coral looks and photographs that we have of the mother colony, we can tell who's who. F. F. So now we're going to take these plugs and we're going to soak them. And the reason you soak them is you got to get the air out of the plugs. Um, that air will bubble through the glue and it'll just, it'll just make for a messy product and we don't want that. So while these will magically sit in here, I'll take three that have been soaking already. And I like to take them and put them on my little egg crate that we talked about earlier. So just line them up. And then it's pretty important that we blot off any standing water on the top. And we want to do that so the glue, when you put it on, if there's water there, it's going to run across the plug. We want it to stop right where these little gashes are in the center of that plug is what we're going for. So next, you're going to get your two-part, your two-part epoxy here. Let me find the, uh, there we go. Just want to peel this outer layer back a little, take off the end. And you can see how that's two pieces. So ideally, for this to mix properly, you want to pull it off evenly. Pinching it, you can do it, I do it, um, but that's not the best way to do it. You use a razor blade or a knife, and you can do a lot neater job of this and take it off evenly, but this gets the job done no problem. Now, I pulled off more than we're going to need, just for the sake of the video, and what we want to do is you want to wet your fingers a little bit, and you want to knead this together so it's all one uniform color. Once it's a uniform color, this will harden in five minutes. Uh, you'll actually feel a little bit of heat coming off of here from the chemical reaction. So while that's going, now we want to get our glue. And this is the important part. This is where everybody messes up. I see nonstop people talking about glue all over their fingers, all over their work area, all over the plugs. and most of the mistake done with that is you're squeezing the bottle. Don't squeeze the bottle. The glue will come out without squeezing the bottle. If you wait long enough and you're patient, just a little bit of pressure will get that glue to start coming out. Now when it gets to the tip, you want to stop and just touch that to the plug. A little bit goes a very long way. Now I know this is super glue and everybody thinks it's instantaneously setting. It's not you actually have a long time to work here. And that's where I think people freak out. They use a ton of glue, they put a pile of it on there, uh, and they're trying to move in quick and rush, uh, afraid that it's gonna harden, and it's not. So now I've taken off a little ball on our epoxy bundle, and I'm just gonna stick it right on top of that little dot of glue. This is gonna give that acro something to mush into that's gonna flatten across the plug and it's going to allow that acro to grow a real sturdy base uh, fairly quickly, actually. So now we've got glue, we've got the epoxy on there, and now we're going to finish it off with another tiny dab of glue. You can see how small I'm doing it. Most of the time, the glue that's left over right there, that's all you need. That's plenty. So that tiny, tiny little bit will get mixed in with the epoxy. We'll be good. So now we got a glue epoxy glue sandwich. We're going to take our fox flames here. And you don't have to push hard. You're just going to put it right on the little ball. Done. And there, we have three pretty fox flame frags. Last little thing you can do, you don't have to, but I like to do it as it helps get any residue off of there and it actually helps the super glue um, set quicker is I just give them a quick dunk in that rinse water. And 
and all these will go right back in the tank, ready to go. In about two weeks or less, you'll see the skin forming over the, uh, that epoxy that we put on. I like to keep them near the mother colony is that's the same par value that they were already growing under and, and used to. So I like to kind of keep them nearby. Let me move this guy over a little bit and put them there. And we see mama and babies. All right, guys, there you have it. I just fragged some macro and glued some macro for you. You can see that if you take your time and you go slow, you get everything prepared ahead of time. There's no reason that you should be, you know, bathing your hands in, in glue and getting glue all over the place. Believe it or not, even doing this professionally every day in hundreds and hundreds of frags a week, I can get one of these bottles to last me months. There's no reason you guys should be using as much glue as you are. It shouldn't be as frustrating as it is or as messy and dirty um, as I definitely see some, some people are having, are, are having issues with. So uh, just reiterate, epoxy, glue, plugs, Sharpie, cutter, iodine, that's all you need.